Hello lovely internet strangers. In today's edition of the A Squares Corner, I'm going to be discussing the somewhat recent news that Mike Pence has signed a two book deal with Simon & Schuster. Oh, the horrors. At least according to those with Trump derangement syndrome in publishing, of which there are many. First, I'll just go through an article covering the basic news and then I'll share some selected reactions from Twitter. I'm not gonna go super deep on this, but I did wanna touch on the topic because for those of you who are loyal viewers, you might remember that I made a video back in January talking about the letter of intent that was circulated where publishing professionals and authors were imploring the powers that be not to sign book deals with anyone in the Trump administration. I will put the link for that video in the description below if you want to check it out. Since I covered that bit of news, I thought I would do a short follow-up discussing the Pence book deal news since as far as I'm aware, this is the first book deal out of the Trump administration. So obviously that letter did not really do anything as I predicted in my video. So let's get into the article. This is from Publishing Perspectives, which is a website that covers publishing from a global perspective, not just covering the US market. I've been reading this website since I worked in publishing because I've always been more interested in the global view than the US centric view. So senior vice president and publisher Dana Kennedy has acquired world rights, first serial rights, and audio rights in a two book deal with Mike Pence. He's to write his autobiography as part of what Brian Stelter, Jamie Gangle, and Michael Warren at CNN are reporting is a deal that, quote, two people in the publishing industry industry have said is worth, quote, somewhere in the range of US three to $4 million. And as the outspoken John Bonner's book is ready for its Tuesday release, with what promises to be the former House Speaker's scathing assessment of today's Republican Party, we may see a new season of political books prominence in the nonfiction market, various personalities and factions vying to contextualize the US conservative and right-wing movements. Yeah, what a surprise. After the Trump election in 2016, everyone and their mother rushed to publish books about what it meant that Trump was elected, what it meant about the Republican Party, what is conservatism, etc, etc. No reason that should be different now. The only difference is that a large swath of the publishing establishment is going to try to keep such books from being published because hashtag no book deals for traders, but we'll get to that in a minute. They quote CNN as saying that news of the pen steal comes as the publishing industry grapples with questions of how to handle high profile would be authors from the Trump administration. The concern, according to highly placed sources in publishing, is whether the writers could be counted on to tell the truth and whether a publisher might provoke a damaging backlash in the culture of cancellation. Almost as if to illustrate this, the messaging from SNS spokespeople includes a quote from Pence reading, I am grateful to have the opportunity to tell the story of my life in public service to the American people from serving in Congress to the Indiana governor's office and as vice president of the United States. I look forward to working with the outstanding team at Simon & Schuster to invite readers on a journey from a small town in Indiana to Washington, D.C. Known for his determinedly loyalist commentary while in the Trump White House, the question in many minds is whether the former president's hostility to him at the end of the administration will have altered what Pence does in the setting of an autobiography. It's worth remembering that Pence was also named to lead Trump's White House Coronavirus Task Force, an effort now largely described credited as dysfunctional and misleading, as Donald Trump sought to play down the danger and impact of the pathogen. As you may remember, Pence declined to try to alter his ceremonial role of certifying on Capitol Hill the election win of Joe Biden on January 6th. So much animosity toward the vice president was instilled in the domestic terrorists who attacked the Capitol that day that they chanted, bring out Pence and hang Mike Pence as they laid siege to the building. The pro-Trump rioters even erected a makeshift gallows for Pence on the grounds of the Capitol during the insurrection. The Associated Press's Jill Coven reported that Pence is steadily re-entering public life as he eyes a potential run for the White House in 2024. He's joining conservative organizations, writing op-eds, delivering speeches, and launching an advocacy group that will focus on promoting the Trump administration's accomplishments. Yeah, and him and every other politician ever since this has been a possibility for politicians to have book deals. I don't think this was happening in George Washington's time, for example, but this happens every year. Some politicians is part of the presidential administration, the administration ends, they get a book deal, they go on tour for the book deal, so they get the money from the book deal, they get the money from touring, and then they go on to do more appearances and get more speaking fees. And sometimes this is all part of their plan to position themselves for a presidential run. What a surprise! This is not something unique to Mike Pence. So it is that the Pence book deal will be understood by many as the politician's effort to position himself after a conflicted end for him to the Trump administration. Yeah, if you were in his position, 
position and you had this opportunity, you'd be doing the exact same thing. The Associated Press quotes literary agent David Vigliano, who did the deal, saying that all major publishers competed for the Pence contract and that the deal is understood to be well into seven figures. No surprise there, there's only five major publishers and, you know, they understand that they're running a business and Pence is not nearly as controversial as Trump and people will probably want to read this book and they want to get the money from the deal. In announcing the deal, Kennedy at Simon & Schuster is quoted saying, Vice President Pence's life and work, his journey as a Christian, the challenges and triumphs he has faced, and the lessons he has learned tells an American story of extraordinary public service during a time of unrivaled public interest in our government and politics. Translation, people buy books about this shit now and we're going to make money off of it. His revelatory autobiography will be the definitive book on one of the most consequential presidencies in American history. I really can't imagine anything Mike Pence will say in either of those two books that he's apparently contracted to write that will be revelatory for anyone. But maybe that's just my skeptical self. Fun fact, the person who bought these books from Mike Pence at Simon & Schuster is a black woman. So it kind of contradicts the whole idea of let's hire more diverse people and get them into the higher up positions because they will make different decisions than the white people would. Hmm, sure doesn't seem like it. She sure as hell didn't listen to the publishing letter of intent telling her not to buy any books from anyone who was part of the Trump administration. It seems like she actually understands how business works and what the demographics of their audience is and what they want to buy. Funny how skin color doesn't always determine what you think and the decisions that you make. The first of the two book Pence deal is tentatively scheduled for a 2023 release, Simon & Schuster says. Wow, I really don't think that anyone in 2023 is going to give a rat's ass what Mike Pence has to say about the Trump administration. That's my prediction. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people will still be clamoring for all those juicy tidbits I'm sure he's going to drop. But I'm pretty sure in two years, especially in this fast-paced, bite-sized TikTok world that we live in, nobody's really going to care what Pence has to say in two years. Certainly not two books worth. I mean, I'm sure there'll always be some small audience, but the reason that all these political books over the past several years were so successful were because they rushed these books to market. I'm pretty sure half of them were barely edited because they were trying to seize the moment when the public interest was still high. The article says that it's less likely we'll see a deal with one of the major publishing houses for a Trump book because not only would fact-checking be a nightmare, but public outrage would be worse. A former executive said this is cancel culture PNL, PNL referring to profit and loss, which is the statement that publishing houses run on any potential book deal to figure out exactly like it says, potential profit and loss. The former exec says that is what they are really afraid of. They are worried about employees. There would be mass walkouts. No one would stay for Trump. No amount of money would be worth it. At least in the minds of the powers that be at the big five publishing houses. Now let's take to the cesspool that is publishing Twitter for a different opinion. I know all of Twitter is a cesspool, but publishing Twitter is just like this extra swampy, gross, cesspool. So Barry Liga is an author who was the originator of the publishing letter of intent and he circulated it using the hashtag no book deals for traders. So on April 8th he tweeted, so Simon & Schuster has given Mike Pence a two book multi-million dollar book deal. You know how I feel about this. Hashtag no book deals for traders. This is just a bad bad move on Simon's part. Let's talk about why. Earlier this year Simon & Schuster canceled its contract with the execrable Josh Hawley saying in part, we take seriously our larger public responsibility as citizens and cannot support Senator Hawley after his role in what became a dangerous threat to our democracy. This applies to Pence too. Yes, he was a target of the January 6th mob, but he ironically helped incite it by standing by his boss in the days after the election. As recently as last month, Pence was still promoting hashtag the big lie, claiming that there were election irregularities and fraud. I mean, there were definitely irregularities and fraud. There are every year. Whether or not you believe it would change the results of the election is a totally different question, but most sane people can agree that there is some kind of irregularity and election fraud every year. But he shares an MSN article that proves that everything Pence said was a lie. Pence's public silence on Trump's mob incitement on January 6th and on the days after, including his silence during the second impeachment, makes him equivalent to an accessory after the fact. He supported Trump's baseless claims and lies right up until the moment he certified Joe Biden the winner, and then was silent until last month when he started spewing those same lies. Hawley and Pence are one and the same, differing only in the details of their fidelity to ending American 
American democracy. Mike Pence was complicit in every bad deed, every lie, every incitement of the Trump administration. He gave cover with white evangelicals and deployed his aw shucks Christianity and oleaginous faux thoughtful demeanor to pretty up Trump's bombast. Someone pulled out their thesaurus for this tweet. Why would Simon let Pence use its press and its good name to cast a hazy gloss over a lifetime of public disservice? Perhaps Simon & Schuster thinks that there is probative historical value in Pence's writing. There is not. Pence wants to run for president in 2024. The entire purpose of these books will be to rehabilitate his image and set up the run. They will be carefully calibrated to distinguish him from Trump without alienating MAGAs. Hashtag no book deals for traitors. I ask you, Simon & Schuster, truly, is this what your imprimatur is for? Thinly veiled auto hagiographies to bolster the careers of incompetent and apathetic politicians? If Simon & Schuster thinks Pence knows things of value to posterity, then why not take those millions of dollars and give them to investigative journalists who can interview Pence and those around him and produce a book that truly illuminates the Trump administration? The Pence deal is a bad deal. It's bad for publishing. It's bad for American democracy. And at the end of the day, it's bad for Simon & Schuster too. Mike Pence is the former V POTUS. He can speak to any journalist in the world. He can write op-eds in any newspaper in the country. He will have no problem getting his views out. He doesn't need a fat book contract. To those who claim that I am somehow a bridging Pence's First Amendment rights by insisting Simon & Schuster cancel his book, I remind you that no one is constitutionally guaranteed a book contract. Simon & Schuster should do as it did with Hawley and as it did with Milo. Cancel the contract. It's the right thing to do. And then he shares the publishing letter of intent again in case you missed it and want to sign it. Back at the end of January, they had 586 signatures. And as of today, April 14th, they have 631 signatures. So they've picked up 45 people. Still not a huge number and still no one of any consequence as far as the powers that be go. So let's dig into what he said a little bit. He's deigning to say what is good for Simon and Schuster. I'm pretty sure they decided that this book deal was good for them. I'm pretty sure all of the major publishing houses that bid on this book thought it would be good for them. He makes this assumption that Simon and Schuster has some obligation to consider the posterity of the work before they give someone a publishing contract. Do you know how many books, especially political ones, are published every year that have no value for posterity. People are going to buy them the week it comes out and they're going to be in the used bookstores at best within a couple of weeks. Whether or not the book will be worth reading in a few years has never been a reason to publish any book, no matter what anyone in publishing says, especially those at the top. Publishing is a business. They are for-profit companies. They publish books to make money. Yes, the people that work in publishing like books. That's why they work in publishing, but it's a business. Business. The people at the top need to make sure that their business keeps making money so they can do things like pay their employees for one. Publishers are not part of the government. They have no obligation to the citizens. They provide a product and people can decide if they want to buy it. Like I said, they're not going to publish his books for two years and I would bet that no one's going to give a shit by that point. So probably the market will have its say as to the value of the Mike Pence book deal. But no, Barry Liga says that the publishers must think about who they're giving a book deal too. I saw another tweet from someone that said, so many issues in publishing, obviously, but whenever I hear something like SNS giving a seven-figure deal to fascists like Mike Pence, I think about how they bought Jesmyn Ward's Sing Unburied Sing for $150,000 after she had already won a National Book Award for Salvage the Bones. What does her winning a National Book Award have to do with their P&L? Sure, it boosts potential profits because people like to buy books from award winners, but she still writes literary fiction, which is never going to be as profitable as commercial fiction, as the kind of book you can sell in an airport. Someone else says something really strange. Will a dude be tapped to edit this book because Pence can't be alone in a room with a lady? And I was like, I think you're making a joke, but like, if you're not, then you don't understand how publishing works because editors don't sit in the room with the authors, even if they're politicians. And then she said, think of all the writers who could publish books and make a living wage and then some for three to four million dollars. That's not how it works. You don't understand economics. You don't understand how to run a business. Business. You don't understand a profit and loss statement. And that is evident from the fact that you think that you can just take the money from this book deal and spread it around to all these minor authors and somehow the publisher would be able to stay afloat like that. 
know. If anyone is ever interested on a more in-depth dive into the economics of publishing, let me know. But I see this shit all the time and it's just so eye roll inducing. But this is the publishing industry. All these authors and even people who work in the publishing industry at like the lower levels don't seem to understand anything about business or money or economics. So that explains a lot of the issues. Anyway, like I said, I just wanted to quickly follow up on this since I had covered the publishing letter of intent hashtag no book deals for traders, but one of the traders has a two book deal, so I'll keep my eye out for any subsequent book deals for some of the other traders. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, comment down below, email me. I love hearing from all of you. Even if I don't reply to every comment, I do read every comment. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, and I hope to have more content for you very soon.